Okay, my name is Olua Tobiajai. I'm the founder, the chairman and CEO of Nord Automobiles Limited, um, known as Nord Motion. Um, we are a Nigerian automotive firm. We assemble our own vehicles in this great country of ours. Um, our aim is to normalize Nigerians and Africans generally buying brand new vehicles. We want to make it normal for people to buy brand new vehicles. We want to make it easy to buy, we want to make it affordable, we want to make it reliable and durable. I have a video of the first time and the vehicle, the vehicle started in the factory. The first time we started a vehicle in the factory. Like, <laughs> you know, it was, it, was, it was nice, it was emotional. Everybody was, was all screaming and shouting. It was nice. After years and months of R&D, uh, regulatory negotiations and everything, it was really nice. I believe every company, when going to a market, we're just about four years old, so you need to have a strategy. So our strategy is to have a, something people will know us for, something we are clearly going to be number one at. Clearly. We can be also be number one in other things or number two, but we wanted to have a segment where we could be number one. And we decided to be number one in the commercial vehicle segment uh, because I believe that um, personally, and as the founder of the company, I, I like things that end people money. I like things that give people an advantage in business. And for us, the way we designed our vehicles make it um, a lot better. We have the lowest total cost of ownership for our vehicles and that makes a lot more sense when you are dealing with commercial vehicles. That's where you see us, with, we are more popular in pickups because it's easier to tell somebody to buy a pickup that would last him six years, that over six years when he does the calculation, he'll be like, I, I made more money owning a Nord pickup, like the Nord Tank or the Nord Max versus even a Tokumbo over six years. So it's easier to convince people to buy because you can show them the merit versus telling them to buy a car which is mainly sometimes an emotional decision where the color the this and the that come into play so um, that's one of the reasons why we are very big we are very big in pickups in trucks and buses also we have transporters strictly using our buses now some of them we're using some japanese brands for medically tested our products because we use japanese parts also were assembled in our own name here in Nigeria. So they decided that they're not going to go back to these products that are costing almost two times the price of Nord. Our vehicles are about half the price of most of the other top brands in the market, but delivering the same value. So that's what, that's what we're doing. So, but, we, but like you know, um, if you do your research, go to our website, you'll see that we have cars, we have, S we have two SUVs, we have, we, we have everything any world-class brand should have. But yes, I agree that we've done more publicity, we've done more push on the commercial vehicles inside the pickup. And the reason, like I'm explaining to you, is it makes more sense. It's easier to convince somebody to buy a commercial vehicle that makes more financial sense than a car. And we know that our vehicles make more financial sense. Our vehicles are impressive in the books. They're also impressive on the road. So that's the reason why we are more popular in pickups. First of all, I've always, always, all my life, always gone for the most impactful, even though more difficult area of anything. My friends always tell me that I like to go for the difficult things, which, of course, yield very good results, but difficult. Yeah, I like to, and that's because I like to be very impactful. I like to make huge undeniable difference in any way I am. That's how that's how I've always been. When I was in Mercedes Benz Nigeria, my nickname was Super Toby. Because I was always trying to do what nobody wants to do. Let me put it this way, I knew it was gonna be difficult and I was prepared to go for it. But I didn't know it was going to be as difficult as it actually became. 
I didn't know. It actually became a lot more difficult than I thought. But I was able to go through it, I believe, because I was prepared. I was ready to um, dig deep at times. Yeah, I have to be honest with you, there were times when I felt like giving up. There were times when I actually really gave up. And I was just waiting to move on to the next thing. Like I wanted to go into farming and the rest. But for one reason or the other, I didn't give up eventually. And I'm happy I didn't because when I see the result, when I see how much impact we are making, how many people we're employing, how many families are happy because we're existing, how many people, a customer was telling me the other day, um, not even a customer, the entire ecosystem, they were using a Japanese product, they were taking loan from a bank, they do hire business, they hire bosses, and this, the bank, this guy had been doing the business for about four years, and the bank was supposed to renew the loan, you know, so that you can buy another boss, and the bank said they were not going to renew because the numbers didn't add up. If they're giving him the loan, the amount this company that was hiring his boss, which is a big oil and gas firm, one of the top four international, uh, you call them international oil IOCs, was willing to pay, was not going to cover the amount that he was going to be getting from the bank. The numbers didn't add up basically. And this guy came to us. We showed him that we use the same parts as this top Japanese brand in Nigeria, we're selling half the price. And he took it to the bank, and the bank approved, and he got the buses from us. And today, two years after, this guy is still in business. He claims that he's in business because of a company like us existing. If not, he'll probably be out of business. So when I hear stories like that, it makes me happy that I didn't give up at any time, and we're doing this thing. So uh, I think my first real job at Mercedes-Benz prepared me. So I was at Mercedes-Benz Nigeria and uh, I was uh, fortunate to be in the ordering department. Uh, I was fortunate to grow very fast to be at the top level responsible for the van division and for that reason I was able to visit the factories in Germany. I was, um, I, could, I saw how vehicles could be made. I went for training um, where you were going to be taught on the physics of making vehicles, how you make vehicles, all the scientific calculations and the rest. So, so I, I would say yes, my first job prepared me for it. Apart from school, uh, my first job at Mercedes-Benz Nigeria prepared me for it. Yeah. First of all, the first two years we didn't produce any units really because we were doing R&D, we were doing testing, we were um, um, consulting or talking to the regulators, you know, on how to do this nicely, safely. So for the first two years, we we're not doing anything. We started commercially around late 2019, 2020, you know, so, for, so that's about two years now. So since then till now, I think um, we've done about close to 200 units. One at Ekpe, which is the main one, can do at the moment, like tomorrow or today, you go there, can do five units a day. But if we add not not too much, just a little bit more investment, just buy a couple of more equipment, which we can buy within one month. If demand if demand um, pushes us to do that, we can move to 25 units a day. Yes, and that's all. That's all one shift. So if we do. If we if we do that investment, I think it's 25 units, and we add one more shift, we'll be able to do 50 units a day. But right now, to answer your question directly, we can do right now five units a day. Within one month, we can go to 25 units a day. That means you've not been operating at the full capacity. No, sadly, no, we haven't. In fact, let me just tell you something. Um, we operate about four days a month, on average. On a good month, we we'll do 10 days, max. On average, we do four days a month, we lock the place and go, because the, that's, that's the amount of orders we have. So when people say that the, the capacity in Nigeria is not enough to meet the demand of Nigerians, I'm, I'm really wondering, no. And you know the good thing, if they actually allow us to meet our capacity, prices will drop, because the economic of scale, I'll be able to, it will allow me to share the cost more evenly and the prices of everything would would drop.
there are three reasons why Nigerians don't buy. Let's even start from brand new vehicles, regardless of the brand, before we go to a Nigerian brand. Let's even start. There are three reasons why Nigerians don't buy brand new vehicles. Number one, okay, and before I even explain, I'll, I'll mention the three reasons first. The first one is financial. The second one is economical. The third one is social. So when I say, um, uh, which one will I start with? Let me start with the, let me start with the economical, economical reason. Now, we are a country where we don't earn much. So, um, and we are, we are playing an industry where it's global. Just like most industries, the price of gold, almost everywhere is the same. The price of petroleum products, some of it, if it's not subsidized by the government, it's almost the same everywhere in the world. That's the same with the price of steel, which is what is used in making most parts of a vehicle or aluminium. It's the same price all over the world. So basically, we're in a world where the price of a vehicle will more or less be the same thing. A decent vehicle anywhere in the world, in the US, in Japan, in Europe, is going to be around 18,000 US dollars. Keyword decent. A decent vehicle with good warranty, you know, tr trusted vehicle that three years after you can wake up in the morning and start the vehicle, you're not afraid to not start, you know, something that you are, you are confident in, which is what we, we are building, which is what we produce, which is what we want. We don't want, we want people four or five years after to be, to be set in that when they start our vehicle, it would move, it would work well. Now, the, 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 the most, the cheapest you can find for a sedan for that kind of vehicle anywhere in the entire world is around 18,000 US dollars. Now, that's about in Naira because of our exchange rate, you know, which is a byproduct of our economy, right? Is around 8 million, 9 million. Now, somebody, how much are people earning? An average person in Nigeria is probably earning 600,000 Naira, 500,000 Naira. That's a really Someone that you, you will call well paying, you know, middle class. It's probably earning five, six hundred thousand naira a month. Which is if you times that a year, that's just about six six million naira a year. That person cannot even buy the vehicle outright like we do here. You understand? So, but I have a cousin who's just been in the UK in the US for just two years. She's just 19 and she she's driving a a decent car she bought for about twenty two thousand US dollars. Why? Because she, she earns an amount that even in just three months, she can pay for half of the vehicle. So and in six months, she can actually pay for the entire vehicle. And this is someone who is more or less earning the minimum wage. Not somebody, someone like any five hundred thousand in Nigeria is probably someone that has worked for eight years. Has a family even. Do you understand? So we are, we are currently, I hope we change this, you know, which I always explain is our, our GDP is very big, but because of the number of people, when you share the money in GDP per capita, we, it's, a, it's, it's low. So there's not enough money in Nigeria to go around, which is what is affecting our salaries and the rest. So this makes it difficult for an average Nigerian on the road to be able to purchase a brand new vehicle. Like I said earlier, a brand new vehicle will cost at least 15, at least 18,000 US dollars. So we'll, we'll, we'll fall back to doing what? Buying a used vehicle that even the, city, the lowest level citizen will not drive in the US. City, vehicles that, that are actually meant for the dump, where they're going to crush them. You see vehicles, I, I saw online on one site, a vehicle that's actually, they sold the vehicle for, I think $1,800, $1,800, that's less than a millionaire. But on the streets here in Lagos, they say the vehicle is very clean and it's going for over four million. So the reality, we're actually paying for the shipping and the custom duty. You get, so that's number one, uh, economic. Number two is the finance. So even if you get somebody that um, earns a certain amount, let's say you finally find somebody that earns about 1.5 million a, 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 a month, that person would want to buy a vehicle. Even that person may not want to buy, use the entire seven month salary to buy a 10 million dollar vehicle. So we need to actually now solve the problem of 
car auto financing, asset financing. Normally, a vehicle is usually the second most expensive thing anybody will buy, an average person will buy in their entire life after the house. So that's why it's normal, it's understandable that you are not paying for it outrightly. But in Nigeria, you have to pay for it outrightly. So that's the second problem. We don't have the structure, we don't have the financing structure to make vehicle purchase easier for people, for brand new vehicles. So what happens? People again fall back to Tokumbo where they can just buy for 3.5, 2.5 million naira used vehicles. The final one is social. This, why do I say social? Even people who earn well, even people who earn close to 100 million naira a year, who can easily buy a 25 million naira car and will not feel too bad, would still not buy a 25 million naira brand new car. They would rather go and buy a 25 million naira used vehicle or a 35 million naira used vehicle. Why? Because in Nigeria, at the moment, I hope it changes soon, it is socially acceptable, probably socially even praised, to drive brand new cars. In Europe, Germany, for example. Yes, to, 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 sorry, to drive used cars, to combo cars. You're probably even praised, not, not only accepted, you're probably even hailed. Yes. You're probably praised when you're driving a Tokumbo car. Whereas, let's say in Europe or in the US, I believe, but more, at least I know the, about Europe very well. If you buy a used car, you're just buying a used car, like everybody is just buying it, you're just trying to get ahead. You know, you, are, you have to understand that it means you don't have the means. Nobody's going to willingly and happily say, I'm a well-to-do man and buy a, or well-to-do person and buy a used car for their spouse on their wedding anniversary or on birthday. No, people won't do that in Europe because it's, it's seen as almost buying a used cloth for yourself. So the same way you won't buy a used shirt for your friend or your spouse, you know, it's that the same way they won't buy a used car for themselves. You get. But right now in Nigeria, people will buy used cars and put a ribbon on it. You know, even do Thanksgiving in church. You know, this is somebody that actually has the money. I know people who actually have the money. I have customers who, I have a customer who has bought more than 15 of my pickups. But when he wants to buy a car that he will drive himself, he goes to buy one of the luxury brands that are used and imports it in. Buy, even though he knows that that used brand will make him closer or that used vehicle from that popular brand will make him closer to his mechanic. He doesn't care. But when it's time to use the vehicle, when it's time to buy a vehicle that um, will deliver value to him, he doesn't want it in the mechanic. One day the mechanic is a waste of money. He comes to me and he buys. So you can understand. So when he wants value, he goes for a brand new vehicle like from Nord. But because, but when he wants to go to church, when he wants to go and visit his friend, he wants to buy a brand that is well known, even though it's used. So I think until when we get to the point where we as a people start to uh, make it, make people understand that no, you rather buy a brand new, brand new thing than a used one, and the fact that it's a foreign brand doesn't make it any better. I think we were still going to have problems um, with increasing the volume of brand new vehicles Nigerians buy. So those are basically the three main reasons why we don't have a lot of... And let me just give you the facts. Um, Nigerians buy more than 1 trillion naira of vehicles. They import. The Nigerians use more than 1 trillion naira to import vehicles every year. We've been doing that for more than 10 years between 1, 1 trillion to 1.5 trillion. That's an average of 3.5 billion US dollars. So this is 3.5 US dollars market. But only 3% of that market is brand new. Only 3% is brand new. So until we do something to change that, um, the assembly plants that we, we've built will still always not produce vehicles to their capacity.